What's up guys? I happened to be on Facebook Marketplace earlier today and I happened upon a decent deal on a washer and dryer. Wow. Well, the thing is I don't actually need a washer and dryer at the moment. So what am I going to do with these things? I thought, you know, maybe I can just save them and um, I'll have them the next time I need some appliances for a rental. I could also use them in my primary residence because I have an electric dryer here and it would be kind of nice to have a gas dryer. Also, um, I don't know, these are a little bit more modern. They're front loaders. I don't have that fancy stuff here. I'm not up on that level just yet, but I think what I'm going to do with these, or at least try, is see if I can flip them. I paid $300 for them and I would like to see if Maybe I clean them up a little bit. I can list them for five fifty delivered, and you know maybe cleaning them up a little bit and offering delivery is enough of a value add to command two hundred fifty profit. The first step was to get these things cleaned up. You don't necessarily need to overdo it, but you do want to be pretty thorough, and you want to get it to a condition such that a decent self-respecting person would be content putting their clothes and their family's clothes in there and running loads. You don't want them to be looking into nooks and crannies and finding other people's grime after you've already driven them out to their house, because then if they don't want to buy it, if they get cold feet after seeing something that you overlooked, you're going to have to drive home and you're not getting paid and then you'll have to clean them up and you'll have to relist them and you've just wasted a whole bunch of your time and this thing is no longer um, easy profit. I don't show all the cleaning here because it's kind of a boring process but what does come up next is the photos. You really want to take good photos because if you're offering these for delivery the only exposure that this person is likely going to have to them to make their decision as to whether or not they want to spend your higher asking price on them is the photos that you provide. So make sure that you have good composition that shows the whole unit front and back and inside and you don't want it to look like you're hiding anything. I feel super silly using all of this to try to flip a washer and a dryer. All right, now I just have to do some post-processing. This wasn't so bad. Maybe I could even ask 600 for them delivered. But that might be pushing it. I don't think I'll get greedy on this one. But, you know, I think when you take good photos of something, you kind of carry kind of an air of legitimacy. I don't know, people see you putting in effort and then they trust you more. And I think that in a way is valid because, you know, let's say I do sell these to somebody and they're not as advertised, you know, I'm going to be advertising them as something that works. But I haven't actually run a full cycle through them, I just kind of dry tested them, plugging them in and making sure that they spin up properly and so on. Uh, if somebody bought them, complained that they didn't work, sure, yeah, i give them a refund. I don't want to actually wrong people, but, you know, if I'm delivering in their expectations and they're willing to pay however much for them, then fair game. So here are the photos that I took for my listing. They generated quite a bit of interest. People didn't have too many questions and yet they were still interested. And I think that's kind of what you want to go for. One thing that I'd add the next time is photos of the model numbers too, because that is a question that I got pretty regularly. Now you don't need the equipment that I have to get photos like this. Decent lighting in a smartphone, I'm sure you can accomplish something that is every bit as useful for practical purposes. What's up? Uh, I'm kind of excited right now because I just made a $320 profit in my first ever attempt at hustling appliances. You know, just I saw an opportunity. I figured I'd try it out and see how it would go. And, you know, check it out. There's the results, the proof. I listed them on Marketplace for $600. I would have been happy to get $550 for them. So usually I try to list things for a little more than I expect to get, so that way somebody tries to haggle a little bit, I can give them a little bit of a break and they feel like they've won and I'm still getting what I want. So that's kind of a strategy that I use. But anyway, the person who bought these didn't try to haggle and after I dropped them off, or when I dropped them off, um, I took the washer into their laundry room because I had a furniture dolly with me and it's kind of a heavy thing. I just did it as a favor, but 
the person was grateful and she gave me a $20 tip for doing that as well. So if you'll remember, I bought these for $300 and I just sold them for $600 and got a $20 tip. So that's $320. And now I've got to figure out how much time I have into this to see if that's actually a good return or not. So when I went to pick these up, I drove 15 minutes. That's um, how far away the place I got them from was, 15 minutes. So a total of a half hour driving to get them. When I delivered them, it was another 15 minute drive. So a half hour there. If you factor in loading them and unloading them and hooking up the trailer and that stuff, we can tag on an extra half hour just as like a buffer to, you know, keep it honest here. So let's call it an hour and a half of transportation time. And it took me about a half hour to clean them up. So all in, I'm in about two hours of my time in $320 profit, which is pretty darn good. Now for the question, would I do this again? Yeah, probably, I don't see why not. If I see something that looks like a really good deal on Marketplace, you know, nice front loaders for 300 bucks, I'll probably grab them again, knowing that I can get 550 to $600 by cleaning them up a little bit and offering delivery. So yeah, I mean, the, I think this is awesome. And anybody who's struggling to pay rent right now, or maybe they're late on bills, or maybe they wanna save some money to you know, buy whatever the hell it is that they're into buying, you know, this is a thing that you can do on the side. Doesn't cost that much in terms of time. You need a vehicle, obviously, that's capable of hauling these things. So I guess there's that. If you have a truck already, it would be an easy thing for you to get into. Otherwise, you could get a trailer for your car. Or the trailer that I used to haul these things was about, well, let's call it $400. It wasn't quite that much, but you factor in decking and wiring and accessories and crap. Uh, that's kind of you know what it ends up at. And what's sweet about this is, let's say I did this two to three times a month, I could make $500 to $900 you know, pretty conservatively. I bet I could consistently get within that range if I did this two or three times a month. And, you know, for a lot of people, five to $900, that might be a car payment. It might be a month of rent. I mean, it's significant. If you can have um, a side hustle that takes, you know, a few hours of your time and it pays your rent or something, <laughs> sweet.